going on people Mike C town here to talk about the current season of The Walking Dead now I was originally not going to do this after covering Fear the Walking Dead but people have been sending me many requests to do it so fuck it why not but I'm gonna be doing these a little bit different I really just don't have time to do these weekly so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them every other week and just cover two episodes so these reviews might be a little bit longer than you might be used to, but just bear with me. If you really want to hear my worthless thoughts about what's going on in this show, then you'll have to just fucking sit through it, alright? So, let's jump right in. So let's talk about the premiere of the, uh, the new season. Um, first off, the black and white thing I found to be a bit annoying. Like, I understand its purpose. It was just a little annoying, like I wish they could have figured out a better way to insinuate flashbacks. The whole idea of the zombies corralling themselves into that quarry was really, really interesting. When they first ran up on it, I felt like that was one of the creepiest scenes we've seen on this show. Thousands and thousands of zombies in one central location just stuck in this place. I think it's also a great idea how they did that with the explanation of why Alexandria hasn't been overrun with zombies. You know, like how these people have survived within these walls with basically little to no survival instinct. Let's talk about Abraham real quick. Abraham is turning into my dog. When he pours out the liquor, a little bit for the homies, and then uh, <laughs> he starts getting wasted, and he's sitting on the porch, and he gives Sasha the deuces. That shit, I don't know why, but that shit had me cracking up. Every time I think about it, I laugh all over again. The thing is, you can tell that Abraham's not really made for this domestic life. You know, and you get that from that scene where he needlessly jumps out of the car to go corral those couple of zombies that are wandered off the path. Like, he needs to be out in the thick of it. Like, he needs to be getting his hands dirty and blood on his shirt. Like, that's what he's made for. So, it'll be really, really interesting to see where this mentality takes him. Talk about big car! Big car, boy. Over there throwing that game on Enid. Finally, someone is working on getting that Mac on. You know what I'm saying? Take notes, Chris from Fear the Walking Dead. If old punk-ass Carl can get his smooth pimp on, then there's no reason you can't either. But someone needs to tell Carl to cut his fucking hair. That stupid hipster fucking hair helmet shit. It's just no good, man. Heath, great casting. Like, this guy looks just like him. And I like how they didn't make him a bitch like they do every other black dude on the show. You know, that scene where they had to go get the zombies out of the car place. Imagine putting any other black dude in that in that spot aside from Morgan. Tyrese, T-Dog, fucking Bob. They would have all been bitches about it, but he was like, nah, fuck that. We gonna handle this shit. So I hope they keep him around for, for a while. This also brings me to the point, Glenn! Glenn has come a really long way, man. When you look at the old episodes of him just being this kind of goofy-ass kid who basically just was ignored and used as bait, and now he's actually a warrior and an integral part of the team, like, I think his transition is really cool. Morgan. Morgan was immediately frustrating the shit out of me. You know, this, this started with him complaining that Rick killed Pete after Pete killed Red. Yo, you gotta sell. And Rick says, well, not the murderers. Morgan says, well, I'm a murderer. You're a murderer. My issue here is that he's not understanding the difference between killing out of necessity and killing out of emotion. You know, and that sentiment carries on to the next episode, but I'll get to that in a minute. Side note, boy. Morgan, when he was spitting that game at Carol, did y'all catch that shit? He asked Carol if she used to be a cop. She says... Why do you ask that? He says, because you're always watching and you always seem ready to handle things. And it's the way he said that shit. And Carol, oh, you're too sweet, and walks off. Morgan was throwing that game, talk about you ready to handle things. Ready to handle this dirt. When Rick walks in on Carter's plan to kill him and basically puts that gun to his head and gives him that who the fuck are you fucking with speech, that was my shit. He said, do you know who the hell you're talking to? You think you're going to take this place from me? From Daryl? From Michonne? From Glenn? Who the fuck you think you are, boy? That shit was tight. That's the Rick that I feel like we need now. That's the Rick that I'm fucking with. Not that fucking harvesting P 
pea pods and eating peas in the fucking field, Rick. I like this, Rick. This I ain't taking no bullshit, Rick. The way it ends with the air horn, which threatens to, like, lead half the zombies that they're taking away back to Alexandria, was really well done. That aerial shot that shows all of those zombies that are wandering off the path towards Alexandria was just really, really dope. Then we move on to episode two, which starts off with Eden's story, which is actually pretty interesting, uh, starting off with her watching her parents die to then be stranded by herself for that long period of time, her obsession with the letters JSS, which we don't really figure out what it means until the very end of the episode, just survive somehow. But yeah, watching her sort of origin story was pretty cool, except for the part with her eating the turtle, which was just fucking disgusting. And I don't mean on some like animal rights vegan type of thing. I mean because she was eating with her mouth open and smacking on her food, which I find to be absolutely deplorable. Just because there's a fucking apocalypse doesn't mean you have to completely ignore basic table manners or etiquette. This episode seems calm for about 15 minutes, and then it just jumps right into the shit, man. The people with the W's on their heads, they're attacking Alexandria, and it's seriously brutal as fuck. They're not just killing people, they're hacking them to pieces. And I can't tell if this is just for the fun of it, or if there's some actual reason for them doing that. You know, are they, are they planning on eating these people later on, or do they just like being brutal? We're still not quite clear on who these people are or what their purpose is, but I think this is the most interesting threat that we've seen since Terminus. And can we talk about Aiden for a second? You know, how fucking worthless are you? If you're supposed to be the lookout with a gun, how come you didn't see any of this shit coming? And even when you do see them invading and you're trying to shoot, you're missing! I swear, these Alexandria people are completely fucking useless. So speaking of Enid, I'm pretty sure she's in on this. You know, when her and Carl are sitting on the floor in his house and he's talking about them, you know, she says, well, they're just people. You know, the way she says that gives the impression that she kind of knows who they are. And then she says, this place is too big to protect. It has too many blind spots. That's how we were able to. And then Carl cuts her off. You know, we, not they. That's how we are able to. So I'm assuming everybody else caught that. If you didn't, mark my words. She's definitely one of the bad guys. Let's talk about Morgan for a minute. He was being a complete pain in the ass. All right, his whole philosophy of stopping these people over killing them was just irritating as shit. These guys are chopping the heads and arms off of people in the community, and you're over here concerned about their precious lives. He even let ones go towards the end of the episode. You know, they were clearly going to kill you, and all you can do is fucking bop them in the head with your fucking Donatello stick. And now because of him, one of them has a gun. Now mark my words, that decision is going to come back and bite him in the ass. The same way it did for Carl when he let that zombie go in the woods and the zombie came back later on and killed Dale. That's what this show is about. The decisions these people make always come back to impact them later on. And fuck, why is every black man on the show a goddamn pacifist? Seriously, this is getting fucking old. Can we get some real G's? up in this show, and I know that's a stereotype that we kind of don't want to keep perpetuating, but just one, just one gangsta ass dude that just walks up in there and don't give a fuck about anything. He don't even fucking shoot zombies, he just smacks the shit out of them until they die. He just smacks them until the whole front of their whole head just comes off, bruh. I want that kind of fucking G. A G with fucking khaki creases and chucks. All these soft Owl and Lanolin ass dudes so far are just really getting under my skin. So far that it's just not even funny. You know, I like Morgan. I think he's a total badass, but he really needs to get his head in the game. Now the MVP of this episode? Definitely Carol. She didn't hesitate one bit in starting to handle business. She immediately starts taking these dudes out left and right. And she even comes up with this great idea to do what Han and Luke did in New Hope and steal the clothing of one of the bad guys so she can blend in and then take them out from the inside. Fuck yeah, Carol. My favorite part is after uh, Morgan and bitch ass Gabriel tie that guy up after he tried to attack them with a knife and he's talking about how they don't belong here. Carol just walks up, bow, shoots him in the head like what? Bow, bitch what? Bow, bitch what? All that time you dumbasses spent tying this dude up, Carol is like, nah, fuck that, son. I don't give a fuck. These fools do not get to live. And that's the type of mentality that everybody in that place should have. And is it me or was Carol 
kind of hot in this episode, man. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the mask and the just brutality that she was showing, but man, Carol was getting me going for a hot second, man. Don't act like I'm alone in this shit. Don't act like I'm the only one that thinks that if your girl walked in the room with a fucking mask on and some blood on her forehead and a goddamn dirty ass trench coat that you wouldn't be ready to go. But I like at the end we do get to see that Carol isn't completely heartless. You know, as she's sitting on her porch with the cigarettes that belong to the dead woman across the street, I imagine that she was thinking earlier about how she had told her to smoke outside instead of inside of her home. And now the woman is dead because she was outside of her home, so maybe she's internalizing that guilt. You know, thinking if she hadn't told her that, then maybe the woman would still be alive because she was been inside the house. Then while trying to wipe the W off of her forehead, she looks over and she sees the A on the, on the post in front of her home. And she has another revelation. Maybe that revelation is that she doesn't feel like she's that separate from those bandits. You know, all murderers signified by a single letter. Overall, I think this is a great start to the season. You know, action-packed, dramatic, well-written. Now, I especially like the second episode, which was directed by Jennifer Lynch, who is David Lynch's daughter. And given the brutality of this episode, that totally makes sense. If you guys remember back, she was the one who directed the episode where Noah gets his fucking face torn off by the zombies. So I think it would be good to throw her in there every once in a while to give us a good dose of gore, because I'm assuming at some point they're going to get comfortable again and everything's going to calm down when they get back to Alexandria and they clear up all the uh, the zombies and then we're going to have like five or six episodes of just boringness. So yeah, I really enjoy these two episodes. I'm really looking forward to what they do next. And uh, just like I said, the greatness of this show is in just these two episodes is really shown just how weak Fear the Walking Dead was. So those guys better fucking step it up next season. But as for this show, I'm really excited for what's next. So that's it. As usual, thank you for living. Thank you for loving. Thank you for being you. And I will see you guys next time. All right? Peace, bitches.